In this video, we'll have a look for short pieces of text within longer pieces of text, and we find out that there's more functionality than similar functions in Excel. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of filecats.co.uk. So let's take some text. Let's take hello there. Now suppose I wanted to find the letter L. Well, I might be using find or instra in string in some other languages. Well, in SQL Server, I use char index, one word. So let's see how we can use this. So I find the small piece of text, and you can see search expression. So let's find the letter L in a longer piece of text. Now, one question, is it going to be the case that this first character is character zero, so it will come up with character place two, or is the first character one? So it will come up with the answer three. So is it one based or zero based? Because different languages have got different bases and SQL Server is one based. So the letter L is the third character. Now I don't just have to have just one character here. I can have more than one. So if I was looking for double L, you can see it's in the third and the fourth characters and it returns the third character. So let's have a look for the letter E and there are lots of letter E's here. So it's going to bring back the first one, number two. Now suppose I wanted to bring back anything after the first one. Well, I could say select chart index and give exactly the same thing as before, but then comma three. So in other words, we've got an answer of two. Let's take that and add one. And so it will start looking at the third character, which is an L and go forward. And there you can see we've got position number nine. So it's brought back this E. Now let's say that I wanted not to have this three as a fixed figure. I mean, if I put at the beginning high at the beginning, then it's no longer position number three. So it's position number six plus one. So I need seven. So now my formula no longer works. So what I can do is return this figure six, put this into this expression here, and then add one. So it doesn't matter now where the first E is, it's going to find it, so position six, and then start searching this string from position number seven. So now you can see we've got position number 13. So we've got three arguments. The third one is optional. So what am I looking for? Where am I looking for it? And where am I starting? Now, if I start in a, ridiculous position. There aren't 20 characters here. So we'll go back to hello there. So there's only 11 characters. It's going to give a zero. And that's also going to be the case if you're looking for something that simply isn't there. Now, what if I wanted to look for a capital letter E? So let's have a look for capital letter E. And you can see that it's finding the lower case E. Now this depends on your collation. So your collation is telling the computer how you want words to be sorted, whether it is going to be case sensitive or case insensitive, so that's the capitalized letters, or accent sensitive or accent insensitive. So let's have a look at an example of this. So as you can see in my collation, I have case insensitive. So I look for a big E and it finds a small E, so that's case insensitive. So that is the equivalent of saying collate and this happens to be Latin one underscore general underscore, and it's case insensitive and accent insensitive. So there is my two. If I change this so that it is case sensitive, then now you can see that it's not finding a capital letter E here at all. If I change that, so change this one to a capital letter E, then you can see it still works but now it's looking for the capital letter. Now, what do we mean by accent insensitive? Well, let's change this so that instead of it being hello there, I'm going to say it is here in Spanish, es aquí, and the I with an accent is there. So if I look for the letter I, then you can see that my default is accent sensitive because this I does not equal this I with an accent. So that is the equivalent 
of looking for accent sensitive. If, however, I change this to accent insensitive, then it will equate an I with an I with an accent. So that is char index. So looking for a short piece of text within a longer piece of text. Now the second function is very similar, pat, short for pattern. But what I'm going to do is look for pattern. So you may be familiar with the where something like. So if I just take a table, a system table, so I could say where name like, and I'll put raw in there. So that finds all names with R or W somewhere in it. The percentage sign stands for zero, one character, two characters, as many characters you want. So raw could be right at the beginning, it could be right at the end, because we've got this percentage here. Equally, there is an underscore. Underscore means one character exactly. Not zero, not two, but one. So if I execute that, you can see it is still finding raw because it is R, followed by a character, followed by W. Well, this same wildcards can be used in PAT index. And not only can be used, must be used. You must have a percentage sign somewhere. So if I go back to my original example, so looking for hello there and looking for an E, you'll see that it can't work. It doesn't know what you're talking about because there is no pattern. So what I need to do is add a wildcard. So I could say, look for as many characters as you want and then an E at the end. So I'm not looking for additional characters after it. And you can see it's found it. It's found it right at the end. Or I can say find it right at the beginning. So let's look for the letter H right at the beginning. Or I can say look for a character somewhere in the middle. So in other words, it could be at the beginning, could be at the end, could be somewhere in the middle. It just has to be there. And so you can see it's found it in character number two. Now let's have a look at this. What's that looking for? It's looking for any number of characters at the beginning and the end. So whatever this is, could be in the middle, could be at the beginning, could be at the end. It's an E followed by one character, followed by another E. So it's not looking for an actual underscore. It's looking for a character. And we can see it's going to find it here with E R E. So it's not finding it earlier because that's E L. It's finding it here with E E. Now, if I wanted to find a more specific character, so let's change that to a let number four. At the moment, this is still going to work, but suppose I wanted it to find a letter here instead of just any character. Then I can have a hard bracket and say A to Z and close the hard bracket saying, okay, this is the character we've got to look for. And now you can see this doesn't find that character. Though if I said instead zero to nine, then it would find that character. And again, we can use collation. So again, if I say, where's my capital E and use a collation. So Latin one general case sensitive, accent sensitive, then it's not going to find it. If I say case insensitive, then it is going to find it. Similarly, if I go back to my previous example of S a key, Then if I look for the letter I somewhere, then it's not going to find it because my default is case insensitive and accent sensitive. So it's the equivalent of this. Of course, it might be different on your computer setup. However, if I change this to accent insensitive, then you can see that it will find this particular pattern. So we have got two different ways of looking for characters inside bigger strings. And these don't need to be individual characters, they could be strings by themselves. So you could be looking for a sentence in a paragraph. 
First of all, you've got char index if you're just looking for the characters themselves. And you've got pat index if you're looking for a pattern and you will need to use at least one percentage sign. So you start off with looking for what you're looking for, where you're looking for it, and then an optional third argument, which is where you're going to start looking for it. But that optional third argument is only applicable in char index. As you can see, it doesn't work in pat index, which just requires the two arguments. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you like it, then please click the like button. And why not subscribe and click the bell next to it so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you for watching this and keep learning.